I started in the fall of 2007 or 2008. I signed up for the first hand building class that was held in this building um, under Heather Hannaford because I'd always had an interest in pottery um, from the first time I encountered it in high school. And it, in 2007, I believe, was the first opportunity I had as an adult to pursue it. I think taking clay, which is essentially mud, such an impermanent substance, and making it into something much more permanent and beautiful and long-lasting is a very intriguing thing. I've made things my whole life. I've always been an artistic person right from as far back as I can remember. And almost everything that I did before though was paper-based. And many of my pieces were damaged by the sun or got water damaged in some way. But the only way that a piece of pottery can be damaged is if it's broken. And even then, sometimes they can be repaired in a beautiful way. And I like the idea that my artwork is going to outlast me, potentially. I'm going to throw the body for a mug. Um, and the first thing that I like to do is make sure that the bottom of my lump is nicely rounded, so that when I attach it to the wheel head, it's going to flatten out and get a nice adherence. I also put a tiny little bit of water just to make it sticky. Give it a good smack, get it stuck on the wheel. And then the next thing I have to do is called centering. And I add a little bit of water, and I use my hands and a lot of muscle strength to get the clay to stick and also come to a centered position. And this takes a lot of upper body strength to do correctly. And as easy as that, I have a centered lump. Now from here, the next step is I need to open this. There's lots of different ways to do this. I use a very simple method where I use this index finger sideways because it won't bend with support on top. And I basically just press down and create a V in my lump of clay. Okay? So now it's open. Mugs have flat bottoms, so down inside here, I'm going to create a flat bottom inside my mug. And I compress the clay down in there. A common thing that happens in mugs is the bottoms will crack in what's called an S crack. And one way to prevent that is to compress the clay down here really, really well. I do both hand building and wheel thrown pottery although I do love the hand building more. The wheel is a tool, it's a very powerful tool, but essentially you can only ever make round things on a wheel. And I like playing with different shapes and different textures. Um, the wheel though is very quick. It's, you can often be very consistent. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a very useful, powerful tool in the studio. Um, there's a certain feel to a wheel thrown item that's different from a hand-built item. And it depends on what you want in your pottery. It's an aesthetic. Um, many people like the professional look and the, the sleek, um, kind of clean look of a wheel-thrown piece, where I like the approachable, friendly feel of a hand-built piece as well. Now, I'm gonna do the first pull. Sometimes I hold a sponge in my hand just to help keep water on the clay. And the first pull happens very quickly. And you want to try to keep a conical shape so that the clay doesn't spread out too much. And now I'm going to slow the wheel down. Because the thinner your clay gets, the easier it is to pull it off center. Tuck my fingers underneath and do a nice steady continuous pull. Right up to the collar. Gently ease my hands away and reposition. And pull the collar. I tend to be very much more old school 
in my pottery making. I use my hands more than any other tool. Um, and I prefer that. But again, it's my aesthetic. It's what I want from my pottery. But I really do like what's happening with technology and innovation. We often talk about pots like they're a body, like a human body. We talk about feet and bellies, sometimes throats and lips. And I want to create kind of a bellied shape on this particular mug. So I'm gonna go down low again, right near the bottom, and start shaping as I come up for this last pull where I'm moving clay. After this, I will just refine the shape. You can see where my finger on the inside is pushing out. Okay. Reposition and define this collar a little bit better. Okay, so, so far, I've only used a sponge as a tool and my hands, but now I'm going to switch. This is called a rib. This one is made from, I think, a silicone rubber. So it's quite flexible. And I can curve it to match the curve in my mug. So I'm going to use the flexibility of this rib to smooth this surface and create a really nice, rounded, consistent shape. If I need to do a lot of work, like production work, and repeat the same type of shape again and again and again, I tend to prefer to work alone because I can concentrate, I can get into a rhythm and a pattern uh, that I can't do in a busy studio space like we have here. But if I'm doing kind of one-off pieces or creative pieces that are looser and not as rigid and formulated, um, I do like being in an environment where there's other creative people you can talk to and share ideas with and collaborate with in some cases. I need to cut it off the wheel, use a wire, slow the wheel right down, and let the movement of the wheel do the cutting. And that's it. And then because this mug has this kind of ridged texture in it, I'm going to make the handle match that. So I use a ruler on an angle and I just make a few lines, changing my angle a little bit just to give it some interest and some texture. So now I'm going to attach this handle to this mug body and I will just look at it and find the place that I think might be the best place to attach it, which might be here. I just use an old brush, dipped in a little bit of water, and I rough up my surface at the attachment points. After I've slipped and scored the top and the bottom, I'm just going to pick up my handle and on a 90 degree attachment, I'm just going to press it and wiggle it into place. I like the thumbprint that that leaves, so I'm happy with that there. And then I'm going to create the curve and supporting on the inside with my other hand, just going to attach this now at the bottom and just pinch off the excess. People sign their pottery in lots of different ways. I just simply write my first name with a pen and then I'll put the year just so that I know what year I made it in. When this is dry, those little bits will brush off and the bottom will be nice and smooth. I teach beginners in the pottery classes that I teach and I get people coming in that have never made anything before They've never even tried clay or anything like that before. And I've not really ever had anybody be dissatisfied or unhappy with the results from the classes. So I would really encourage people, if you want to try something creative and something fun and, and different, please think of pottery because it can be so satisfying.